All right, so this is my second video in my build tool tutorial. In the first video, we created a movable wall. You can click on it and you can move it around. And when you let go, it's, it's anchored wherever you left it. So in this video, I wanna be able to hit the Z key and build a whole bunch of walls and then move them around in case people are attacking me. And I only wanna be able to move my walls and I don't want other people to move them. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna start right from where I left off in the last video, and I'll show you how you can do the same. So I hit the stop button here, go to the website, and I'll put this link in the description. You click on this, or you enter this into your uh, browser, go to these three dots, select edit, and you're gonna get exactly this world right here. All right, so if you have that, let's take a look at what we have so far. There are only um, three things in this world that you need. Uh, four if you count the wall. So the wall is basically that right here. It's a single part. It's got a Boolean that says that it's movable, all right? But I want to delete that now. Delete that, go to wall, and hit string value, right? And I'm still gonna call it movable, but this time it's gonna, it's gonna store the name of the player who created the wall. So movable, that way nobody else can move your walls. All right, cool. Now in server script service, we have this move part and in replicated storage, we have this move RE. Well, we're going to need a build RE in replicated storage. So hit the plus sign, remote event. And this is going to tell the server, hey, build the wall here, this one, told the server, hey, move the wall. It was a gateway. So actually the, the server side stuff happened right here in move part. All right, so let's go ahead and add another script to server script service and we'll call this build part. So I'm following the exact um, structure as in the, in the move RE. All right, we're gonna go down here to starter player. So starter player had starter character scripts. Look at that move it local so i'm going to add a local script call this one build it local because this is my local script build it loc all righty now let's go ahead and do some coding let's say local user input service that's for when we hit the key game get service uh what do i want user input service cool and i want a wall so this is gonna be my key code. I'm gonna say enum, uh, enum, key code, there we go, Z. And I won't, won't, might wanna put other stuff there too, like a platform and ramps and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna start out with a wall. I need a camera and I'm gonna use that for my positioning of the wall. I'm gonna be looking through the camera at my mouse. I'm gonna go 25 studs away from the camera and place the wall. So I need my camera. So workspace, current camera. And I'm gonna need a player. And a player, I'll do game.players, local player. I'm gonna need the mouse. Ah, here we go, mouse, player, get mouse. And I'm gonna need replicated storage, game, get service, replicated storage. I'm gonna need a remote event. I'm gonna get that from replicated storage wait for child, and build RE. There we go. Now, let's make a function, local function. I'm gonna call it build it, right? And build it is going to just pass in input from the user input service. It's gonna be a key value. So say if input key code equals equals wall, then local i position that's the initial position we need two positions initial and destination we're going to make a c frame it's going to say camera c frame position right destination position so the camera is the initial the destination is where the mouse is right so we're saying mouse unit ray direction so we're going to get the direction uh, the camera's looking towards the mouse. 
and then we're just going to multiply it by 25 studs because it's kind of hard to get uh, true distancing in, the, in these 3D worlds. We're just going to go 25 studs out based on the direction our mouse is from the camera. So I'm going to do a remote event fire server. I'm going to pass in the wall. I'm going to tell the server, hey, build a wall because otherwise it might be a ramp or a roof. I'm going to give the initial position and the destination position. Then I'm just going to get my user input service. I say input ended, connect it to build it. All right, so we got that. Let's go to our build part and server script service and finish this off. So I'll come over here and server script service. I have to get that remote event, so I need my replicated storage. Game, get service, replicated storage. Get the remote event from, from RS, right? So RS, wait for child, build RE. All right, after we got that, let's go ahead and get server storage. Ah, that reminds me there's something we gotta do. So I'm gonna say game, get service, server storage but nothing is in server storage. We need our wall and server storage. Let's get our wall, put it down here. Ah, where is it? Server storage, there you go. Server storage has a wall. Wall has a movable uh, string value on it where our name is gonna go in there. All right, so we were more interested in the wall at the moment. Let's so say local, W part, it's gonna be wall part, if you haven't figured that out. Wait for child, wall, and we're gonna clone that. All right, so we'll say local function, build it. The player is going to come in, build name. It's going to say wall, I pause, D pause, initial position and destination position. All right, we're going to need that for our C frame. So we're going to say if build name equals wall, and uh, let me just check, make sure we call it a wall. Yeah, we passed in wall, right? So on this side, it needs to be wall. Oh, and there needs to be two equals here. There we go, equals, equals, that's comparison. And let's get the height of the player because figuring out the height to put a wall is very complicated if you have a complex terrain. So we'll just make it the character height plus one. We'll just move it up a little bit, right? So I'm gonna say player, character, humanoid root part, C frame position Y. So that's the Y location of your character. That's how high they're standing in the world. I'm going to add one to it. That way my part isn't stuck in the ground. I basically just played around with it until I saw a value I liked. All right, now local D position. We're going to change it a little bit. We're going to say vector three, new. The D position on the X is fine, but I want to make the y, the height of the character. And then d, pause, z. And I'm just gonna copy this because we're gonna do the same to the i. And that's gonna make our C frame nice and the, the wall's gonna be up and down real nice. It's not gonna be leaning or anything because the height's not gonna change. Change all these d's to i's, right? So we have i position, i position, and i position. So we should have one for d and one for i initial and destination positions. So I want to find the difference between those two positions. I'm going to say D pause minus I pause. Get the unit vector, multiply it by 25. And I'm going to make a C frame with that information. C frame, new, I pause. That's where the, the C frame is going to be located at first. It's going to be facing the destination position, and then I'm going to move it out the distance that I'm supposed to. I know C frames are tough. So it's a local part. I want to clone my C part. What was that? W part. I'm sorry. W part. Clone. And then I'm going to get my parent to that part. It'll be the workspace. And then the C frame will equal 
the C frame I just created. And now since my wall is movable, I only want it movable by me. Uh, when I create it, I'm going to say wall movable value equals player dot name. All righty. Down here on below everything, I'm going to take my remote event, say on server event, right? Connect. So that's what we actually, on the move, on the build it local, we fired an event when we hit our Z key. And that's calling the event. So we're placing it server side. All right, that looks good. Let's see what else we got to do. Let's go and make a modification in move it loc. Okay, so open up move it loc. This is from the last video. So move it loc under get target. We check to see if the value is true, if it was a movable part. Now we're going to check to see if it's the value is the player name. All right, looking good. Let's try it out. Oh my God, we're at 11 minutes already. Let's see, we got in here. Hit my Z. Oh yeah, I'm moving parts, I'm making parts. People are coming at me and I'm a bit of a boomer, so I'm probably gonna die, but at least I have a, a chance, I can build a wall. All right, we'll go Z, 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 Z. I didn't put any limits on it, I didn't slow it down. Maybe the next video we'll put the build sound and slow it down a little bit, maybe put a roof up. Use the rotate function can't rotate these yet but lots we can do anyway i hope you had a good video uh, a good uh, time in this video and let me know if you have any questions